Hello everyone and welcome to what is a very special video. We are taking an in-depth look at Glenn's collection. Now, if you're not subscribed already, please consider doing so. For more stuff like this, if you have a car collection or a car you'd like me to film, let me know. But today we're going to be taking a look at Glenn's collection. All of these cars that you see behind me are for sale as well as three others. So we're going to take a tour around all of them. So let's take a look because I'm so excited. This is sort of the ultimate roster of, of Rovers really. First one that we want to take a look at is this ZT Typhoon. Um, this is obviously a V8, a 260. You may have seen it in another video where I did a little bit of a drive and a little bit of a tour around her. She's on those 18 inch wheels. They're straights, MG straights. She's got Xenon headlights as well. Same as my car, Xenon headlights. And because this is um, was factory fitted, it has all the ballasts and stuff, so they'll move about. So it's the 4.6 litre Ford Modular V8, which Rover crowbarred, MG Rover crowbarred into this thing. Originally, these were actually built by ProDrive at one point, because I don't think the Longbridge factory had the tooling for it. So we'll look at the main event under here. And look at this. And there we go. The 4.6 litre V8. 260 brake horsepower, you could get a supercharged version, the 400R, I think. I don't think that was a factory specification though. And that was obviously like 400 brake horsepower. I think JM did a, did a video on that. Yeah, all very well cared for this thing. And this one is for sale as well. So links to all of this in, and Glenn's contact details will be in the description if you wanna, wanna buy one of these. If I had the money and the space, God damn it, I'd have every single one because it's so freaking good. But, this is sort of 75 ZT, the no, ZT and um, like um, Valhalla, this is the best, for me anyway, this is just the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Of course, it's wonderful Typhoon colouring, um, there is a full in-depth video on this car which I'll link here, so you'll be able to see that, or the other side, whichever side it is. So we'll have a look around the back and we'll have a look at the spoiler in it, all that jazz. So another thing, these are similar to the contemporary seats in the 75s sports seats of course so they're all electrically adjustable we'll do a bit of interior magic soon but we need to get to the other parts of the exterior so these but these bits are actually just chrome painted so it's a bit of a weird thing i thought they would have something come down but that's how they've made all the zt's but it's big spoiler which i think really sets it off the quad exhaust it's just had new front suspension and yeah, it's brilliant. So this car is fully loaded. You've got the Harman Kardon sound system in it. You've got the sunroof. And then you've also got all the other stuff inside. So we'll take a quick look at that now. So this car inside is gorgeous. These seats have been really well kept and they're all electrically adjustable. Memory, I don't even think, no, these ones don't have memory, which is a bit poverty compared to the 75. We'll whack that door closed. You get your V8 badging on there. You've got the whole nine yards. Um, the mileage on this car, last service was I think 9,000 miles ago by the looks of it, 78,000 miles on the clock so she is very good and if we give her a quick boot up, there we go, beast, right, turn it off, we've also got satellite navigation so you've got the Highline nav, you've got the weird sort of ZT um, 260 tunnel action here where they've gotten rid of that little cubby hole because of course you've got more stuff going on in here she's got a handbrake compensator fitted and i think this car has the mark yes so this car has the um newer body control unit so you can pop the boot with a key you can also do the lazy window lock and wind down so we'll show you that of course that's all really nice in there in general not a lot of marks and everything, it just looks really nice. It's even got the ZT rubber mats, the MG ones, and the original MG ones. Could do with a bit of a re-dye, but that is life. Look at all that stuff. Absolutely brilliant. Five-speed manual. I think these only came in a five-speed. Yeah, you've got all the angriness of this wonderful thing, a proper face kicker of a car. So let's go have a look at some of the some of this other stuff on the outside. So with all of Glenn's cars, they've got them the newer BCU fit, so you can do the, the lazy lock, which basically locks all the windows and puts them up, or you can do that. It takes all the windows and everything down, so the vent 
and then I've got the video on. It's only beeping because I've got the boot open. So, but that's how you know the alarm works. Brilliant. Parking sensors obviously on this work. The IPK stand is working. The alarm works. IPK stand is working. Just a bit of a weird thing of me just setting the alarms off of every single car. The absolutely brilliant thing. Of course, with all the with a lot of cars, I'm, I know I'm spinning about as such. With a lot of these cars and a lot of old cars in general, you get some marks. So let's go have a look at a few things of those. Again, if you're watching this, if you're interested in this thing, I've driven it. It's absolutely brilliant. Some marks on there, just standard stuff really. Some stone chips on the bonnet. Lights could do with like a bit of a refurb, I guess. But the, I think they just need a polish, actually. I would say. But oh, and you've got a bit of lacquer peel on here. It's such a unique colour though, and it, this sort of stuff I, I didn't really notice when I first looked at it. We're all solid though. All solid. Has an MOT and everything. Brilliant. Absolutely smashing. Look at this. It's also had... Um, oh, see, one sec. Spinny key syndrome, does she have it? With all of these, I like to have a look and see if they've got spinny key syndrome. She doesn't have it. That's a rare thing. Full size spare. All of that in there. Some other bits in there, but they'll be included in the listing, I assume. Oh, there we go. Here's some service history. Wow, look at that. So basically, if you were the big boy, the big bruiser that bought this, the bar, the bar fighting car, you got your 260 um, owner's manual. That looks crazy. Another thing that I never really got with these, this was a demo car at one point. Um, so, another thing I really didn't get with these is they didn't come with a thing with them. You've also got your, um, your navigation, your navigation CD as well. So we'll whack that in there. Good stuff, it's brilliant stuff to have. So you've got all your, your jazz in here, all your servicing stuff and the N Navtech, I didn't know they did the navigation for these, but I found that out today. Because the Highline audio system stuff, just general niceness. These these spokes are very thingy, my God, very tight. Toolkit, whole nine yards, really. Brilliant stuff. Looks like it's had its rear light seals replaced as well. Sound. Let's get on to the other ones. So where to next? Let's have a look. I want to break it up a bit. We're saving the T reg until a bit later. This is a launch car, so we don't want to. Don't want to spoil it yet, but you can skip. There's chapters on this video. How magical! But we're gonna have a look at this wonderful Y Reg. So same year as my car as well. Now we move on to the Y Reg. This car. So this is a very late Cowley car. Still has the black sills. 2.5 liter KV6. With the obviously with a lot of these cars that are pre-project drive, so we go all the way back to a T Reg. So yeah, very very old like the launch cars but every every single pre-project drive element on it anyway so this is obviously 2001 so there are a few pre a few pre-project drive bits missing out of it such as the black um black expansion tank and, tank and stuff but we'll, we'll get on that when we look at the engine bay so general condition is pretty good and um, all the english white naturally you talk you got your torpedo badges your engine size badges you got your bullet wing mirrors a pretty good condition chrome wise in general she's no sunroof on this model i think it is a connoisseur this this one no oh no it has cruise yeah cruise no sunroof does have a rear roller bind as well which is very interesting i have that as well on mine a few other things about this one of course with it being a pre-project drive car we've got the rover boot plinth that says rover on it and then we've also got the bond the um, boot badge here this car has also had a BCU upgrade, which I would recommend, because I've had, I've just had that done, as you've probably seen in Tuesday's video. Love, love it with the pop in the boot. Wouldn't mind it going up a bit further, up like a Jaguar though. But a few little spots, sort of general chips and stuff. That's from a, a rock or something. This chrome on this door handle, I'd, I'd just replace that door handle if I was if I was buying this thing. But this is this is a really really nice car. So you, you've got your other lovely pre-project drive elements such as these badges on the i think it's the d pillar or the c pillar we're sitting on 15 inch crown wheels i still have these 
incredibly nice wafting or wafting along I when I got in mine I was actually quite shocked by the ride it was just so so weird just sort of floating on these wonderful 15 inch wheels my car has serpents on it now I really like the look of the serpents though so I would have checked out change them other than that standard affair really you get your mud guards the factory mud guards which look great and a few other just general bits it's all looking really nice. This is a very straight example, isn't it? Look at that. So now we'll move on and we'll have a look in the interior. In this car, with the BMW Project Drive, you have the wood, which is, for me, an essential in a Rover 75. You also got the low-line nav with five-speed manual, so it's a V6 manual. We've got cruise control, two heated seats on the front, and the roller blind which works the interesting thing about this car she has the matching wood wheel with the with the dash which is very good all these cars by the way they come with these embossed headrests Glenn has done such a great job tracking them down and you actually get two sets of them so one set for the rear passengers and one set for the 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 front actual people so just crazy you've, all, you've even got this walnut topped gear stick really nice stuff this car is super cool and super nice so this is obviously quite a late cowley car with it being a wire edge i just missed out but yeah you've got your standard in too you've got your piping on your seats wonderful steering wheel not many marks to say this interior is 21 years old or 20 years old the only thing i've noticed really is you've got the newer style mats as you can see there with a the new style logo nothing that i would complain about really at least you've got some mats i'll figure this out it's like rocket science this car as well as i've mentioned has that bc upgrade so you can pop the boot did lazy window window lock and window um raising and lowering brilliant stuff oh my gosh it's got a driver's side cup holder and one for the passenger issue is with that though i find Obviously, I'm a peasant though. I've never had one when you're changing gear and stuff You could potentially knock your drink especially if you have a high a high drink. So that's a bit weird, but damn, Look at that It's been greased as well that one Look at that That's something else that another nice feature with this car I'll show you in the boot Now we're at the boot She doesn't have spinny key syndrome these are some of these are real pedigree without the spinny key syndrome just flip that over because i'm gonna dox anyone in fact this. so with these cars this is this is something else by the way you've got all your, your stuff there so this is obviously this is obviously george this car that was sally the um mustang engined beast look at that key that's the um very super early key glenn's done such a good job gathering these up absolutely brilliant that's your spare key you also it also comes with all, all these cars by the way come with the original bcu the original headrests just just nice touches glenn has, has done such a good job with this collection it's just something to behold and it's quite sad that it's getting sold but at the end of the day needs must and They'll be going to good homes anyway, because I know if any of you guys buy them, it'll be pretty good. Original owner's handbook, usual stuff. This one doesn't have an embossed 75 on it because it's a Y reg. They phased that out before 2001. And then obviously every month after they started taking random stuff off. But yeah, looks like she's had her light seals done as well. No water. Nothing like that. Very nice. I've noticed my... Oh no, without a Okay. Oh, do we have a full size in here? Ooh. No, space saver. Looks like it might need its rear light seals actually by the looks of that. Rear light seals, you might need to change them if you buy this. Bit of rust on here as well. Just a, just a little bit. Just a little bit. But, gosh damn. That is something else. You've even got a tow bar on there with power. Crazy. I love it. So we need to move on to the next car. So what to next? 
I think I'll pick this Moonstone Green W Red. So, naturally, this is a pre project drive car again. But Glenn has really done a great job collecting these, so let's take a closer look at this wonderful green emerald. So, this is a two and a half litre V6. This car's an automatic, so in my opinion, this is the perfect combination. I've been driven this thing, sublime. Love the V6. So, she's sat on a set of the Regal wheels. I'll put it on the screen if I don't know what I'm talking about. Cowboy car again. I think Glenn has assembled a, such a, a cr incredible roster of Cowley and early cars. Two and a half litre, you've got your, your um, torpedo badges or engine badges. The usual bullet wing mirrors. Absolutely great colour. Uh, you've got a bit of a bit of a mark on the front. So she's been scuffed. She's had a battle scar. Headlights could do with a refurbish, but you are lucky though you get the rover headlights. Um, another few things really about this. No sunroof. So no worries, but if you look after your sunroof, you don't really have to worry. Usual C and D pillar badges, looking really nice. This car is a sandstone interior though, but we'll get to the interior in a minute. So we have the usual affair, British flag, usual stuff, parking sensors, the whole nine all around. You have a, I think the, these cars, it's incredible. Like with my car, of course, I didn't get half of the stuff I've got, so I've had to put it on. So with these, when you're grabbing one of these things. You're getting like all the embossed headrests and stuff. But anyway, I'll contain myself. We've got factory mud guards on it as well. Generally brilliant stuff. Let's have a look inside. So this is my this is easily my second favourite interior colour. So let's just close our door. Thunk. Brilliant. We have our power faults. Only one's working though, I think. I'll I'll have to speak to Glenn to see if he's getting that one fixed. I've always wanted a set of power faults. You need to, there used to be like um, an advert on, on daytime TV. Please buy me power folds. Anyway, no, I'll buy them myself. Highline nav, only issue with this one is the screen is a bit dicky. So let's wait for the screen. There we go, screen's a bit, me trying to bloody touch it like a, wow, what a millennial. But yeah, the usual stuff really. Um, I this the issue is it's too, yeah, you've got your TV, you got your usual, I don't think the sat nav disc in it, but it is in the back. This interior is, is really nice. The seats are a bit a bit um, wrinkled. That's just age, though. And you've got embossed headrests. Only the front this time, but full sizes on the back. But it obviously does come with the original headrest with it. You've got some aftermarket mats. So no, we no mat um, glory here. But I've, Glenn and probably have some more. But again, that's for that's for um, you to sort out if you're buying it. Usual affair, you've got your CD changer in there. In the boot you've got some other stuff. And this is a five holer. So we've got two heated seats, the lovely roll blind, which has just gone up. Cruise control, um what what you call it? Um that thing that stops you skidding about. Um traction, traction control. <laughs> you've got traction control as well. So that is quite rare to have it a button there for it because they phased that out in the earlier cars in the later cars should i say so let's have a look at what the mileage is if i haven't put the mileage on if i haven't said the mileage i'll put it on the screen eighty nine thousand miles so we're not half bad i think glenn used this as a daily car as well but we've got our usual wood our lovely steering wheel and this steering wheel is in frigging crazy condition if i had a set of sockets it'd be off <laughs> I'm, jokes. I'm not a rubber as with all of them bcu upgrade again boots open but we want to know does she have spinny key nope god god how has he fixed all of these usual affair really you've got your nav in the back the original headrest in here. I think. <sighs> space saver. So many space savers. I've got full size. You've got. Is that, is that a what? It looks like a water pump. I guess you get a spare. Again. The carpet is a little bit damp, so it might have light seals. Again, they are like a 15. Not like 15 quid, like 10.95 to fix them. So 
disturbed. Look at that, parking sensors the whole night. Brilliant. Got your smiley plate as well. What a great car. A bit of rust on there, but usual stuff. You just grind, I would just sand that down. Four, 200, 400, 800, 1000. Spray it over, and then, yeah, usual stuff. Not that bad. What is next? Let's have a quick, another look around. What is next? We need to pick these, they were off to the English, the old English white section. Here. So I think we'll pick this wonderful T Reg which is loaded. So now we're on to the T Reg Old English White. A very early car. So we are obviously a Cowley built car. Two and a half litre V6, KV6 naturally. We have our automatic gearbox. So this for me is the penultimate car. I can remember when Glenn first told me he was selling these and I was like, God damn it, I wish I had the space for that. This one is just, this is the car that sort of took it. This is a good car. So we have a sunroof on this model as well. So this is literally loaded. It's got everything, the whole, it's a five hole of this car. So usual stuff around here. We are okay on the sills, pretty good. We've even got our bloody jacking point rubbers. Crying out loud. You really, it does make me a bit jealous. We've got, the factory mud guards, yeah, wonderful badges. You've got your, yeah, your, your um, CD D pillar badges. Just look at, it's just so nice. Yeah. Usual stuff on the back, but this car there is a bit. So at one point someone's probably reversed her into something. Just that just needs bashing back out again, and that as well has cracked all the paint there. This does have um, reversing sensors as well, but yeah, it is a shame, like, but the, it's all fixable, especially this, especially that, and with it being a flat colour and not metallic, it's it's all doable, isn't it? And I, if I had the money, I would, I would totally buy this thing, like, in an instant, but covered the outside, more or less. There's obviously going to be a few dings and stuff, but let's have a look Oh, there is a bit of a there's a spider there's a oh there's a bit of rust on this door as well where someone's basically it's basically chafed up against something so you know, one of them things in it right anyway let's have a look inside so while well, i'm doubled over we have our usual we have our leather piped brilliant matching steering wheel and this steering wheel is actually in really good condition there's a few little, little marks on it but it's usual stuff Highline nav. I don't do I have a battery in it. We do, we've got a battery. So GPS, I can't turn that on. Screen off. TV module isn't installed on this car. Dual zone climate control, that's across all of these cars because they're high spec models. You've even got your heat seats, your usual five hole model. This just the, with this being an automatic, it's just so frigging crazy. It's just the ultimate model for me. The ultimate cruise is 74,000 miles as well, so it's incredibly low mileage. You've even got bloody embossed headrests on the back. Look at that. It's incredible. Another thing with this, though, is it does have aftermarket parking sensors because it's too early for the parking sensors, so it does have, um, like, a light box thing there for your parking sensors. Bit weird light box, one of them things in it. So, yeah, the usual. So, let's have a look at the boot. Have a look at Ronald's boot. Of course, it's got that BCU upgrade, and you pop the boot. No hands, let's just check though. Spinny key syndrome. Nope. Brilliant. So, one of the best things about this car is since it's a T Reg, it's an older one, they deleted that from the first, I think it was the first month of 2001. They got rid of the Rover 75 branded on here. So, that's quite a, quite a special thing, and they're really, really rare because obviously they only did it for like two years. You've got as well, you've got your usual key. Um, let me just do this off camera. So you've got your special key, look at that. You've got, of course this is from Epson Motor Group. Epson Motor Group, so you've even got your original dealer things with that, look at that. It's these little details that I really do love. Of course MG Rover Owners Club. These little tiny, like, just little things that most people wouldn't notice, but you notice. You've got your navigation CD, eject that. Look at that, Na a Great Britain 1999. Straight back in. 
cool. Underneath here, you've even got, which they deleted on my car, your little pull, your little handle. So we've got a space saver spare in there. It's all right, looking rather nice. This as well, I didn't. I think you only get that with the space saver actually, this little bit here. All in all, looking very nice. Very, very nice, right? So what's next? The wonderful Wedgwood Blue T-Reg launch car. So this is a launch car. T-Reg, Wedgwood Blue. We've got on the interior. Whoa, not going in there yet. So this is a two and a half litre V6. It is an automatic. Yeah, there are all of them came in automatic. There's no parking sensors, but this model has had them fitted um, by, by one of its previous owners. Of course, you've got literally this is sort of for me is the holy grail of the, the norm the normal 75 you've got the rover lights where they've got the branding on them you've got the all of the stuff you've got the little things like the little plastic covers that cover the bolts on the seats you've got obviously the the two-tone piping on the interior you've got every single sort of thing that was taken away from obviously pre-project drive in fact the piping remains so ignore that you've got Two and a half litre um, badges, two and a half litre KV6, obviously. Underneath here as well, interesting thing on these lights, Rover branding as well, slightly curved. I've always found that really interesting about these, these earlier models, the launch cars. So all of these launch cars were wedged with blue with a Neptune blue interior. There's just a bit of chromey issues going on here. Shame really, but these can get sorted out. I think it's on more or less all of them, or it's on one side. So you've got, you're sitting on crowns, everyone came with crowns. You've got these badges on the pillars, sunroof, the whole nine yards, the same pump as usual. I'm not too sure about this badge though. If anyone knows anything about this badge, let me know. This might be like a, a D, like a sort of a nameplate badge, so it's identifiable for the customers in the dealership. Who knows? But, yeah, it is literally stunning. If I was to pick a car to put my money on in terms of investment, it would probably be one of these. Because the, the 75 has quickly gone from, ooh, that, that crippled Rover, to, oh, I really, I wouldn't mind owning one of those. So, yeah, this for me is the holy grail of all the 75s here. So, let's take a look at the wonderful blue interior. So with this car being a launch model, you've got the Neptune blue interior. So you've got blue door cards, obviously with the usual sandstone looking stuff, coupled with this cream, the usual cream 75-isms. This piped blue leather interior, which looks so nice, this wonderful steering wheel in Neptune blue. It's just, it's just amazing. Of course, this car is on. Let's just check. She is on, I think it's 78,000 miles. Proper car, that. So, she's got the Highline Nav. You've seen one before. This one, though, has the onboard computer as well. So, look at that. Does all these things. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, obviously, that works when you start the car. But we can't bother to do that. But, yeah, five-hole, all the features that you'd expect them to come with. Because this was fully loaded, because this was intended to be a demonstrator car it is a demonstrator car so obviously rover wanted to show you everything you could get including these personal line interiors like this neptune blue you can get the aubergine sandstone i think is personal line as well not 100 percent the piped one is i think but you've got everything glenn being glenn he's put these the well these came with the car these original embossed headrests but the rear ones he's added another set so it's like two for the price of one it's a right right just magic I love embossed headrests. Gosh damn. Usual, obviously, this is Neptune Blue as well. Your hand, your hand brakes around this. Um, the gear selector, of course, is the magic combination for me. The two and a half litre V6 and the automatic transmission, five speed, obviously. Yeah, let's have a look at the boot. Another really cool thing, of course, these carpets are blue as well, and the little door trims. The trims down here are all blue. You've got these mats. Now, these are really rare mats. So, you've actually got the badging in them. Now, this one's obviously come off. But they have the badging in them, which is crazy. And, of course, it's topped it with another nice mat. Kind of want to double map my car, really. To... With it being an early car, let's see if she has spinny key. 
Oh, no, no spinny key, Jesus. She's just a bit stiff. There we go, we're open. So, original Heves in there, of course you'd want them. Sat nav, we'd have a CDM. And underneath, of course, you've got your handle, which mine didn't come with, which I'm very sad about. Space saver wheel, what is that? Hold up, is that for the sat nav? Digital, oh no, that's for the parking sensors. So it does have aftermarket parking sensors as well. Look at that full kit there. Look at that. You even got spares of those. Caps and stuff. It's got locking wheel nuts as well, this car, mine didn't come with those. Yeah. It's very, very nice. What a great example. Love it, really special. So, let's have a look at another car. Okay. Let's go have a look at another car. So, we've done the majority of these now. We just have the three English whites to go. Let's look at this one here. So, this is a two litre KV6. Most people didn't know that these came in a two and a two and a half. Of course, people that know about 75s would know that. But I looked at it initially, I was like, it's a diesel? It's not, it's a two litre KV6. So this is an automatic as well, which is wonderful, but I prefer the two and a half litre, but this nonetheless, especially I think the insurance might be a bit different with it being a different sort of engine, but another old English white, I like playing with doors. The chrome on this car is really good besides this rear door handle. Sitting on crowns as well again, oh there is a bit of a, one of the things there is missing. Usual, the, the thing is with all these cars is Glenn has basically gone and bought the sort of the best sort of the better ones of, of the ones that have been for sale in of all they're all early cars so a lot of these things that i'm pointing out i've already pointed out before oh and with these these as well they've got this has got fully stamped windows as well look at this yep usual affair on the back this one does have a bit a bit of an aftermarket exhaust thing going on there so not my cup of tea she's got stock parking sensors parking sensors that came with the car i believe usual affair this bit of chrome is okay this is okay this chrome is down here is good all the wing mirrors are pretty nice as well just a look great i'm besotted with it cowley stuff as usual just what a car how brilliant i've been playing with some stuff third probably it's not no dodginess brilliant looking amazing so let's have a look at the interior and then we will move to the boot. So this one, same as all the other white cars, well, besides one, no sunroof. Well, well, this one has a low line nav. I think it is a low line nav. I don't actually turn the bloody thing on. Rover. That's another interesting thing. You don't really see stuff like that on these older ones. They all come with stupid aftermarket things like my car. But this steering wheel is just so nice. It's just incredible. This is like window shopping with no money. Well, window shopping is window shopping with no money. Anyway, wood dash. This one's a bit marked though. It does have a few marks on the dash. I'll come around and show you that in a minute. But other than that, it's really good. Aftermarket mats, not really my thing. But a lot of these cars, I think they all have the handbrake compensator um, fitted. So Steve from the Midlands Nano Meets, or known as Arctic on the forums, he fits these um, handbrake compensators. So basically it negates the usual 75 sky high handbrake where it's literally sat there like this. So cars more or less all sorted, aren't they? But we've got more or less everything again. We've got embossed headrests, the whole nine yards. So oh this another thing, oh this is a bit this is the grey um I can't remember it's ash interior over the black leather, so well black over ash. So let's have a further look. This little to door topper is missing. You can see it's moving about in there, but yeah, it's just missing. We'll be all right. We just need to get that that added on now. So let's take the key to the test. Does she have the illness? Spinny key syndrome. Why do none of these cars have spinny key syndrome? Why am I the only bloody one with it? So I'm just gonna have to flip that over because it'll be fine information so we have this it's just a normal one of course this is maggie the wonderful v reg all the service stuff the thing is about this service book is nobody really gets stamped up to 
I think Glenn has some additional service to pay. I mean, look at those that Rover approved. Rover approved, MG Rover approved. Even black. There again. Service reports. Look at that. Really nice stuff. Anyway. Usual bits. I think even Glenn's been even planning to. Yeah. So he's probably going to end up fixing that. But we'll see. The original headrests are obviously in there. Just good stuff. Good, good stuff. I think. Let's just have a look under here. This has got the extra boot carpet. So some of them come with like a different thing. Yeah. In there. We're looking all right. It has the pre project drive branded. Um, oh no. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a specific one. It has like the Rover logo on it somewhere. Weird. But yeah, of course. PC upgrade again. All of them have that. Uh, really a must. If you want to take it into the, the 22nd century of super advanced cars. So let's take a look at something else. So let's have a look at another one. We're going to look at this W Reg because it has a very interesting interesting setup in there for a phone so this is a w reg 75 few things to know she has the later lights these are the smoke these are sort of like the smoky sort of i think it's 2003 to, yeah it's 2002 to 2003 they did these lights no rover logo if you notice so they're not pre-project drive there's a bit of lack of peel on this bonnet the bonnet you probably want to get that all re-sprayed and sorted out with it being a flat color it's not too hard to to do um it have yeah it still has its original light its original um fog lights in the rover branded ones which is obviously really good so this is can't no it's anyway so it's two litre kv6 it's a manual as well which is of course quite rare so we'll have a and that oh there's a sneak preview there all around pretty good some bit bit of chrome pittage on these doors just a bit there usual stuff but you'll notice there's a bit of an aerial a bit of an aerial going on here that's for a phone. And I'll show you the phone in a minute. A bit of lack of peel on here as well. This car's sort of, I think it's the paintwork you'll need to redo that and obviously the bonnet. But other than that, it's looking pretty pretty straightforward. You obviously you've got all your badging and your usual stuff. You're sitting on those 15 inch crown wheels. The thing that I find a bit odd about this car though is this is being sprayed white when it should be black. And these sills are black. It's a bit a bit of go in there so if you were to get that you'd probably want to sort that out but other than that she's looking really really good my car's the same it's past two mot's with that little bit of bit of bubbling in that corner but all sills all the sill um, ends on these need to be replaced anyway soon because they're really bad for rust because of those weird rubber jacking point things so let's continue and take a look at the interior of this one so in this car we have a phone it's a nokia an old Nokia, similar to the um, similar to the Jaguar had a Dynatac built in, um, thing built into it. So this car has had this put in. Not sure if it's from factory or find that out and put it on screen. Of course, usual affair, full wood. There was a bit of cracking on this wood on this dash though, so you'll want to have a look at that. So I think actually it's underneath. It's just a bit of cracking, so it's just whatever in it. These weird Rover mats, I've never seen a mat like that before in my life. That is very extra. I think it's aftermarket though. Of course, you've got the little phone with this phone that system. It's not actually wired into the, the speaker system. There's actually a separate speaker down here. When we tried it last time, it didn't actually work. So I think this speaker might need a bit of attention. But other than that, you've got usual stuff. Your CD changer in there. I think this is a low line system. Still what more or less the same as that car but it's a bit weird it's, it's a two litre kv6 manual car so this is incredibly rare and it is nearly loaded it just doesn't have traction well i don't think no only diesel side traction i think so we've got cruise heated seats rear roller blind the 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 full full monty nearly but lovely interior of course you've got your embossed headrest front and rear if you have a look at the rear there, you've got all them embossed headrests. Look at that. No, why doesn't my... Fit? I'm going to continuously complain about this. So, this car, of course, if I just flip this over. We even have tax discs. These cars have a, have a decent amount of history, but of course that will be detailed by the person who's actually selling them. But look at all these tax, tax discs going back. 
I think 2013 and 2014 was when they phased those out. 2014. Because I never actually got a tax disc, which I'm quite sad about. This car, I believe all of them come with these keys, but I can be corrected. Wonderful Rover key. So, just crazy rare. You've got your, this is a really, really weird key ring, but it's actually pretty nice. Don't mind grabbing one on the car. Of course, you've got your standard booklet. Just the usual one, really. Because it's a W reg, it didn't come with the embossed one. Yeah, one of the things. You've got your original headrest in there as well. Some plates. Of course, this one has this, which was deleted on my car. Looking good under there. It's nice and dry. A bit of surface rust in some places, but not too bad. Half size and um, little space saver wheel. She's all right. Very nice car. Could do with the rear number plate being changed though. But that'll still pass an MOT, I think. Just, just brilliant. Yeah. I mean, you listen to these doors. It just sounds quality. Right. Let's go on to the next one. This here is a bit weird. It's a V Reg 1.8 litre K series. This is before the turbo, so they didn't offer the turbo in this in this year. So we've got obviously the standard pre-project drive Rover, cowley black, and um, sills and bottom of the bumpers, crown wheels. These are um, car coloured. They're not chrome. Don't think they specified that on this car. Well, this car obviously doesn't have a sunroof either. Bit of lack of peel on the sunroof, on the sunroof, on the roof itself. That needs to be sort of. That's something you want to address. But to be honest with you, I didn't really notice. The thing is, with them being white, it's such an odd. It's such an odd thing to notice little little marks. And stuff. With mine, like being a metallic, you believe it's not a notice little marks. This has been resprayed at some point. To this, I I would either try polish this up or respray it personally. It looks like what's happened is. Lack of peel there, lack of peel here. And then someone's gone and gone over that, realised they haven't done like the, the best job, and then then they've just sort of left it. But I would get this this boot lid resprayed and that resprayed if I wanted this to be perfect, but god damn, to run it as it is would be really nice. So of course with this being an earlier car, it does have the 1.8 litre badging on it. Just look at that. Parking sensors. The whole the whole nine of the pre-project drive nearly. Well, it's not T red, but still an absolutely great car at that, and especially with it being a rare 1.8, this old, something else. I think it's one of a few 1.8s built at Cowley, so let's have a look inside. Oh my god, so this car isn't as loud as the, other, as the other ones. I think it's probably, it looks to me like it's a club. So we've got two, um, just the two heated seats, we've got no roller blind. We've got none of the other stuff, so that's probably why those wing mirrors are the old English white. We've got the wood steering wheel. This is cracked a bit, if you can see there. So I'd, I'd probably replace that because I'd be literally eyeballing that all the time. But this wood grain is very uniform, though. You might want to try looking at refurbishing that. This car again, though, is an automatic K Series 1.8, which is such a weird combination. This is the standard thing, so no navigation, nothing like that. We do have um, dual zone climate, though the usual interior Glenn's put some embossed headrests in the back and there's some in the front so you've got the full nine yards on this one I think this one as well has a hand, handbrake compensator in it but I think all of them have that this car also has the BCU upgrade which I mentioned earlier just genuinely a nice place to be let's just have a look at these actually I want to take yeah oh it's a bit weird it's a bit extra that they all come with um, the sun blinds with, um, with lights on them for the vanity mirrors but who knew? Let's have a look in here. CD changer with its cassette. Nice to see. Key goes in the boot. Turns. Make me book mad. That mine doesn't turn. Of course, she's an early car. She's got this. And no, I made sure that was clean before I did it. So, Rover 75, the embossed stuff. Because this is Barry usual stuff here this is obviously the, the um, normal sat nav so you don't get none of the, the high line stuff because that would be a bit of a a bit rude to say the least usually in there there's a bit of surface rust in there so you'd roll it, probably want to have it give that a bit of attention you've got your space saver your usual stuff and just get this headrest out of here look at that 
But it's not damp, I don't No, that's not damp. So that's alright, we're doing okay. What a brilliant car. So that is it for the 1.8. There is one more car, however, and it's a diesel, so I'll show you that. So this here is a bit of a unicorn, so it's a 51 plate, but it's got a few pre-project drive things on it. I think this was one of the well, this is either had it all put on it at some point or it is one of the last ever pre-project drive cars. So it probably is missing a few little bits, but got your pre-project drive um, headlights on there. You've got your, your badging on the back. You've got a bit of a bit of delamination on this wood screen as well. I believe this one's a bit of a project. A bit rusty on that wiper. That's life, that's pretty easy to fix. It's a two litre diesel as well. But it's a diesel manual, which is very weird. Very, very strange to see an old English white, two litre, two litre diesel, manual, pre-project drive diesel, 75, is just crazy. And it's got no sunroof, which is also equally weird. So this car has a sandstone interior as well, which is another, it's just a complete, well, I would say it's a white hot, but that's sandstone. So, bit of a dent here as well. Bit of a dent there. This car again I think is a bit of a project but it depends what Glenn's sort of doing with it. Just look at this though. She's got a tow bar fitted. Not sure if you'd really want that. I really like it. Some points had a bit is someone's reversed into something. This car doesn't have parking sensors. So yeah. SGL Motor Group. This is an original one. You can see by obviously that, that Rover logo there. And the original MG and the Rover logo. Of course that, that might have been something that someone put on a remanufactured one, but I'm pretty sure that is original. Bit of um thingy in here. So I think probably at some point this light's been broken and then this has all come and decided to crack. So usual stuff down the side. Of course with this car being a long bridge car, you have these white sills, body coloured sills. Or yeah, let's look inside because I am I love sandstone interiors. Ready? So I am in one of the weirdest situations I've ever been in. I am in a two litre diesel manual 75. Has all the wood of a pre-project drive car. Even has the Rover branding on the on the stereo, which just looks great. This is this is quite rare to see as well. So I'm quite chuffed about that. This one doesn't have the auto dimming mirror though. So it's a bit of, a bit weird. I'm, I'll put some more spec information on the screen shortly. But yeah, this is a very very odd situation look at that so if you have one of these let me know that's really really weird glenn has kindly put this in here actually so let's give this a quick read so this is one of 640 old english white rover 75s built at longbridge so it's got it's quite a number of course this it's had this weird thing on it i'd probably take that off and sort of, sort of check the steering wheel the steering wheel is okay. I'll probably take that off though. I'm not really a big fan of these bloody steering wheel covers. Other than that though, usual stuff. She doesn't have any of the cup holders that go on this side because they're obviously deleted from the T-Reg onwards. This car has standard headrests. So no embossed headrests, but god damn. They didn't, well they didn't come with them anyway, but damn. What a great project. As well, they don't have airbags in here. And it doesn't have airbags in there. In there are the curtain ones, so. I wonder what spec this is. I'll put it on the screen, naturally. But, wow. Sandstone interior, aftermarket carpets, but they're a nice deep pile as well. So, we'll have a look at the rear and we'll check it, check out the boot. Go. So, the boot, no spinny key syndrome. Because <clears throat> this is a later car, you want to get the standard handbook. So, let's have a quick look inside. So, under here, this is off by the way. It's having some engine work done. Um, it has just had a new clutch master and slave it's had a new condenser it's had the intercooler o-rings changed and all the manifold and everything cleared it just has a it has a bit of a water leak which is which i think well i'm pretty sure that he's getting around to fixing so let's take a look under here so we have our half spare wheel the issue with these ones though is they always get bloody dirty under there so that's not rust that's loads of dirt so it's just basically i think at one point as well this has had leaky lights yeah, it looks like it was a time lapse, so you probably want to get them changed off. I'll go and I'll probably change them. So, that's that with the boot. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed, and I hope I've gone into as much detail as I can about these cars. With them all being so uniform, it is quite 
quite samey, but that's what's really, really, really special about this collection and what's special about what Glenn's been doing. So these cars are all for sale, all these 75s and the ZT, um, Sally the ZT. So thank you for watching. Links are in the description for all of this, all of all the details of Glenn, the owner, so you can contact him and get in touch with him about these cars. Thank you for watching. Keep watching and remember to subscribe.